Our hope is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. I will go unto the altar of God. To God who gives joy to my soul. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. My dear brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins to God and prepare ourselves, that we may be found worthy to participate in this holy sacrifice. And now let us make an examination of conscience. Having confessed our sins unto God and asking for his forgiveness, I will offer the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive our sins, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. And your people will rejoice in you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. I am the Lord. This is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See now, the earlier things have come to pass. New ones I now foretell. Before they spring into being, I announce them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise from the end of the earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have called us to new ways and new beginnings. You have made us a new creation. May we ever be thankful for past mercies, ever joyful for past favors, and ever more passionate to serve you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Today, being Quinquagesima Sunday, we take the first reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, I will lead her into the desert and speak to her heart. She shall respond there as in the days of her youth, when she camped up from the land of Egypt. I will espouse you to me forever. 
I will espouse you in right and in justice, in love and in mercy. I will espouse you in fidelity, and you shall know the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual for today. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant. Since a death has taken place for deliverance, from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. When he speaks of a new covenant, he declares the first one obsolete, and what has become obsolete and grown old is close to disappearing. The second reading for today is taken from the second letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, Brothers and sisters, do we need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by all, shown to be a letter of Christ ministered by us, written not in ink, but by the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets that are hearts of flesh. Such confidence we have through Christ toward God, not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us. Rather, our qualification comes from God who has indeed qualified us as the ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter brings death, but the spirit gives life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the track. From now on I announce new things to you. Hidden events of which you know not. Almighty and eternal God who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to St. Mark. Glory be to you, Lord. The disciples of John and of the Pharisees were accustomed to fast. People came to him and objected. Why do the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunken cloth on an old cloak. If he does, its fullness pulls away, the new from the old, and the tear gets worse. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and skins are ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. For you are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by all, shown to be a letter of Christ from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Again, to you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. A letter of recommendation, which is also known as a letter of reference, is a document by which the writer assesses the qualities, the characteristics, the capabilities of a person being recommended in terms to that person's ability to perform a particular task or function. Today, letters of recommendation are typically related to employment, to admission, to the institutes of higher learning, or even to scholarship eligibility. In today's second reading of Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, Paul speaks of letters of recommendation. But these letters are not written on paper by one individual, but rather on the hearts of the individual by God. Paul further writes that these letters are not written on tablets of stone, but upon the heart, and with not ink, but rather by the Spirit of the living God. What Paul is speaking about in Christian terms addresses the character of an individual. The word character is defined as the mental and moral qualities that are distinctive with the individual. The late Reverend Dr. Billy Graham wrote the following about character. When wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. But when one's character is lost, all is lost. The great 18th century poet and statesman, Jonathan von Goethe, wrote, You can easily judge the character of a man by how he treats those who can do nothing for him. The late Helen Keller wrote about character. She said character cannot be achieved in ease or in quietness. Character comes about through the experience of trials and sufferings that can strengthen the soul, inspire ambition, and by which success is achieved. True followers of Christ, I believe, are those who turn their lives over to Christ and who strive to live Christ following their willingness to follow Him through their conversion and through rebirth. Jesus reminds His followers on His famous Sermon of the Mount on how to judge one's character by using a very simple analogy. He says a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. It is by their fruits that you will know them. Paul gives further definition to a Christian's character 
in his letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verse 22 through 26, in which he writes, by contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not be conceited, competing against one another, nor envying one another. My dear brothers and sisters, this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, the Christian Church will enter into the somber season of Lent. It is a 40-day journey of following Christ, the way of the cross, and by concentrating on his teachings more deeply. It is a time of not only reflecting on the importance of our Lord's teachings, but most importantly, it is a time of introspection, of searching within oneself and understanding one's character as held in the light of Christ. Jesus reminds us that a transfer, transformation of an individual which is needed can only take place for those who truly seek God. We are reminded by St. Paul that we become new creatures when the gospel of Christ finds its place in the heart of an individual. When one seeks to be led by the Spirit of God in all things, and it is in when one is blessed through the very grace of God to put on the Lord Jesus. All of this, my brothers and sisters, brings about one's own salvation through our faith and trust. My dear brothers and sisters, may this upcoming season of Lent give each of us wisdom and insight into better knowing ourselves. May we take the words of St. Paul to heart who concludes in today's reading when he says, brothers and sisters, we have such confidence through Christ toward God, not that of ourselves we are qualified to take credit for anything as coming from us. Rather, our qualification comes from God, who has indeed qualified us as the ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. 
Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? That our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the benefit of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, through this holy oblation, may we ever be conscious of your love and thankful for your mercy. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God. Forever and ever, Amen. the Lord be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your whore hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. You give us the season of anticipation that takes us from the joy of your incarnation to the penitential mood of fasting and the contemplation of your passion. As we prepare to abstain from worldly trappings, open our hearts and minds to a spirit of true contrition and of loving reverence for you. And so therefore we join with the voices of the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Zanana in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Zanana in the highest. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace and defense and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and all who profess the true orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our prayers today, let us pray for the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the homeless, the hungry, the unemployed. Let us pray for all those suffering from the coronavirus, those who are in the hospital, as well as for their families. Let us pray and ask that God would bless the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and the caregivers who fight every day to save others. Let us remember in our prayers and pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, all abused and neglected animals, for all victims of violence, both here and abroad. Let us remember and pray that God would watch over and protect all those who serve in our armed forces, both here and abroad as well as all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for their hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and in honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and to make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who would believe in him, 
to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so grave for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you, God, his almighty Father, giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in a magnet host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, Grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and with all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Numbers in their company, Lord, not weigh our merits but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord, amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever, Amen. let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, from all evils, past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, also Andrew, and all your saints, grant us peace in our day, that being supported by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us to receive it to everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may become my safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the bread of heaven, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us now offer the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray, most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen.
So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, through this sacred banquet, you unite us to your Son. May we come to know and love you through him, the bridegroom of our souls. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy, may it be effective for myself and for all those for whom I have offered it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to you, Lord. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found life, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. And he who did accept him, he empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of an only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God. My dear brothers and sisters, again, I welcome you and thank you for sharing with us today's Holy Mass. We will conclude today's service with the offering of prayer for the blessings of Almighty God to rest upon our church, upon our congregation, our families and friends, as well as offering prayers for the blessing of Almighty God to rest upon our nation, its leaders, and for all the other intentions that we offer today for the sick, the suffering, and the dying. We will also conclude with the offering of a prayer for the repose of the souls of all faithful departed loved ones. May God be with all of you, until we gather again at the table of the Lord. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, world without end. Amen. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed loved ones, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May perpetual light shine upon them. May they all rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.